Hi, I'm Mrs. D Math. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to go over determining the slope and y-intercept in eighth grade math. Any non-vertical line will cross the y-axis. This point is called the y-intercept. This is going to be your y-coordinate of the point on the graph. And at this point, the x-coordinate is going to always be zero. This is going to be true of any line that is not proportional. If it's a proportional line, your y-intercept is at zero, which means you will not need the plus b in your equation. So this line right here is linear, non-proportional. It does not go through the origin, zero, zero. So we do have a y-intercept. It does cross the y-axis. So here we have a table that goes with this line. So the points 2, 6, 4, 9, 6, 12, 8, 15, and so on are all on this line. So we're going to use this table and the graph, and I'm going to show you several ways you can find your y-intercept and your slope to fill in this equation. So let's go to the graph first. So on the graph, we have our y-intercept, and your y-intercept is, again, where the line crosses the y-axis. And in this case, we can tell at this point, 0, 3, is where it crosses the y-axis. Now, if we go to our table to find our y-intercept, we want to know what y is when x is 0. It does tell us up here the x-coordinate of your y-intercept is always 0. So what I'm going to do on the table is figure out the pattern here on my x portion. So in this case, as we go backwards, we are subtracting 2. So in order to continue going down, I'm going to subtract 2 from my first digit here, and I end up at 0. So now I have figured out when x is 0. I'm going to do the same thing for my y. So my pattern here is subtracting 3 each time. So if I subtract 3 from 6, I end up with 3. So this 0 for my x and 3 for my y matches the y-intercept I found on my graph. So let's fill out what we know so far. We know y equals something times x. I haven't found my slope yet. And then I know my plus b is going to be at 3. And it is positive because it is above the origin. So I'm going to have a plus 3 for my b. That's my y-intercept. Now let's find our slope. We have determined how to find the slope in other videos. But now I'm going to show you one more way. So we're going to have three different ways we can find our slope. So here we have our point at 0, 3. And I do know that I can count my rise, which means I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and my run, which is 1, 2. So I do know that my rise is 3 and my run is 2. So there's one way to find our slope. Another way we can go over here to our table. Our change in y is 3 and our change in x is 2. So that would also determine my slope, 3 over 2. Another way you can find the slope is to use the ordered pairs on your line. And so here I have 0, 3, and I know another one, according to my table, is 2, 6. So I can use the equation y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and the 1 and the 2 are referring to the ordered pair that I use. So for whichever ordered pair I use the y first, I'm going to use the same x first on the bottom. So in this case, I'm going to go with 2, 6 as my y2. So here I'm going to fill out my formula. I'm going to do it over here on the graph. So my y2 is 6. My y1 is 3. So that's my numerator, 6 minus 3. And then my x2 that goes with 6 is 2 minus my x1 is 0. So then I just solve. 6 minus 3 in the numerator is 3. 2 minus 0 is 2. So therefore, I've determined three different ways that my slope is 3 over 2. So I can 
do the rise over run by counting on the graph. I can find the change in y over the change in x from my table, or I can use my ordered pairs and plug it into my equation y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And either way, I'm going to end up with the slope for my equation. This linear equation is called slope intercept form of an equation. So my formula is y equals mx plus b. m is my slope, b is my y intercept. You can find the rate of change m in the initial value of b from a graph. So here we have a graph. We're going to figure out our y intercept and our slope so that we can fill out our formula. So I'm going to go ahead and write y equals x. And I'm not sure if it's a positive or a negative value for my y-intercept yet, so I'm going to wait to fill that in. So we have the y-intercept is the easiest thing to find. If it does not go through the origin, you're looking for the point where the line crosses the y-axis. And it is right here at 0, 2. That means that my y-intercept is plus 2. It is on the positive side of the origin and it is two points above. So if the x value is zero, your y value is your y-intercept. So now let's go on and determine our slope. But first let's figure out this point because I want to find our slope based on where we use our ordered pairs that we just learned. So here we're going to go four is my x and negative two is my y. So I'm going to use my formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you don't have to use these two points. You can use any point on this line, but these two were already marked for us and they're the easiest ones to find there. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. So I'm gonna go with my y2 is gonna be two minus a negative two. So make sure you keep those negatives and minuses separate over, I'm going to have to use my same one, 0 minus 4. So you can see here that I used my y2 was 2, y1 is here. If you want to label those 1 and 2 so you don't forget, that might make it easier. So 2 minus a negative 2, and then here I have 0 minus 4. So this ends up becoming 2 plus 2, if you remember from your integer rules, minus a negative is a positive, so 2 plus 2 is 4. And then on the bottom, 0 minus 4 is a negative 4. And it doesn't matter in our fraction whether the numerator or the denominator is negative, the whole fraction is negative. So now I have 4 over negative 4, and that actually equals negative 1. And I don't have to put a 1 in front of my x, so therefore my actual equation is y equals negative x plus 2. So my slope is negative 1. If I want to check this, I can go over here to my graph and I can go ahead and count. In this case, my rise is going down. I'm just going to check and make sure that I have this correct. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's a negative. And then my run is to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4. So again, I have negative 4 over 4, which equals negative 1. I could also do this here, and since it is a negative 1, that means I could go down 1, right 1, and I do have a point there. Down 1, right 1. You can see that there's a point at each of these intersections, and it would continue all the way as far as the line goes. So there is my equation. One other way I'm going to show you, you could actually consider this equation as your y1 and this as your y2. So it doesn't matter which one is your one and which one is your two. If you use this negative two as your y2, you have to use this four as your x2. So let's fill it out the other direction. So let's say we have negative two minus two and then four would go first minus zero. So in this case, I have negative two plus a negative two which is negative four, and four minus zero is four. So all it did is put the negative on the top instead of the bottom, but they both equal negative one. So I end up with the same slope no matter which way I 
actually do this. So my final equation, y equals negative x plus 2. I'm Mrs. D. Math. Thanks for joining me today for determining the slope and y-intercept in 8th grade math. Have a great day. Bye.